the capital of Sweden. You can say that this city floats on water. It is spread across 14 major islands and linked together with its 40 bridges. What I like about Stockholm, well, it is a bustling city, of course, but also here are so many good restaurants, great cafes and a lot of nice parks. And no matter what season, you can always feel this energetic vibe of a metropolitan city. And that's nice. Today, I'm going to make Swedish meatballs with creamed carrots and potatoes with parsley. And seared scallops with blueberry vinaigrette and then I'm going to make a dessert with a lot of tasty Swedish berries and sablione. Nice, I think. This is Valdemars Udde on Jurgården one of the major islands in Stockholm. And this is like a central park, actually. And people just go here to relax. And it's here I'm going to prepare my first dish today. I'm going to use strawberries, cloudberries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, and red currants. So, this is all for you who have a sweet tooth. I'm going to start with a dessert with sablione. It's an egg sauce. So I take four egg yolks. And it's good if you use a bowl that can stand some heat. So if it's made of metal or some glass, that's good. Five tablespoons of powdered sugar. four tablespoons of white wine. And this is, this is nothing to be apprehensive about. It's very quickly done. Many people think, oh no, a sablione, I can't do that. But it's really easy. I'm going to show you that. Um, I need some lime. Okay, so sis from one lime and use from two. Now you can use otherwise an ordinary balloon whisk. I'm going to use that. Or you can use a handheld electric whisk. It's up to you. I put my metal bowl on a pan with gently simmering water and just start to whisk it slowly. Now you can see that the sablion is it's turned a little bit fluffy and pale and that's how I want it. It's very important when you make sauces with egg, and now for example this sablione is, that it doesn't get too warm, because if it does, if it goes over 185 degrees Fahrenheit, the egg yolk starts to coagulate. And then I promise you, you will have a lot of lump of egg yolk in your sauce, and we don't want that, do we? And to see if it's ready, you can just lift your beaters Look here. You just lift the beaters and they should trail a ribbon of foam that you almost you can almost write with it. 
then we are almost there. The sablayone is done. Okay, so we just pick over the berries. Red currant, the blueberries, raspberries. Blackberries, strawberries, blueberries, and my sablayoni. And now, if you have a blowtorch, and I just happen to have one, just in my pocket, and right here. You can just wave it quickly over the surface to brown the sablione. But if you don't have it, it doesn't matter. There we go. Okay, we're done. Now I have to taste it. This is very delicious. And it's such an easy dessert to make. You have to try it. Mm. What makes Stockholm truly unique is the archipelago of 24,000 islands dotted just outside Stockholm proper. Many of these islands are easy to get to by public boats, leaving every 20 minutes from the city center. Can you see those three masts over there? That's the Mbasa Museum. Four hundred years ago, the great warship Vasa was about to embark on its maiden voyage. This ship was meant to be a symbol of Sweden as the superpower in Northern Europe. And can you imagine that anyone who was anyone at that time in Sweden were gathered together in the harbor to see this ship being launched? It was quite an event. But shortly after setting sail, water started gushing in through the open gun ports. And the proud ship, in all its splendor, capsized in the Stockholm Harbor, just a few hundred yards from here. The incident was, of course, a bit of an embarrassment for the shipbuilders of Sweden. And the reason was probably that the keel was too small in relation to the hull, the rig, and the artillery. And as you can see, there are lions, lion's head above the gun ports. Those were there to frighten the enemies, but also to show their power. In the 1960s, the ship was salvaged after centuries of resting on the bottom of the harbor. The ship was put together like a huge jigsaw puzzle and there were more than 13,000 pieces. The hull is made of 1,000 oaks and just look at the sculptures. The preservation work took 17 years. is a city built on water and actually one third of the city area is water and what you see right over there is the old town and that is often referred to as a cradle of Stockholm. In the old town you will find cobblestone streets, hairline medieval alleys and tall dark houses. The intricate doorways still bear the arms of the wealthy merchants who once lived there.
market is in the middle of Stockholm and here you can basically find anything your heart and stomach desire. And I just love to walk around here and taste and smell and buy my groceries, vegetables. Mm. I think I'll take a little wind instead. Should we plock a I like potatoes in similar size because I know they have the same cooking time. And I think I'm going to cream this potato with my meatballs. I'm going to make Swedish meatballs. I start with two eggs. Pour in some milk. I think you probably can hear the loud music and people are screaming everywhere here. Well, today it's a, it's a big day here in Stockholm because all the young students, they take their exam today, so that's why. So I just uh, continue. I have to whisk together the eggs and the milk. Some white bread. I've just cut off the crust of it, as you can see. I just put those in the bowl with eggs and milk. And I just leave them to soak a couple of minutes. It's like porridge. This is perfect. And then my minced meat. And here you can say I use both. I, I use minced pork and minced beef. The light meat is pork and the dark is beef. And why I use both is because I like the fat in the pork and I like to taste in the beef. You can of course use only beef if you want to, but sometimes the meatballs can be a little bit dry when you then fry them. So. I think it's nice to mix. Then we just mix this together. And the reason why you use fresh bread, actually in the old days it was very expensive to buy minced meat, so they used fresh bread so they could get more out of the meatballs. That's why. But I like it. I like when you mix the minced meat with the fresh bread. It's nice consistency and then the leek that I've already washed and just make that a habit because there are always some dirt in the folds here so always wash your leek then we just finely chop it Then we just season it with salt and pepper. There we go. Now I'm just going to shape my balls and I do that with damp hands. That's easier than the meat mixture don't stick to your hands. Butter in the pan. One swirl of oil in the pan, or two, or three, two and a half. Then we just shape the meatballs. Now you can hear that the butter has stopped sizzling. And that's a good sign. In goes the meatballs.
I use medium heat because I just want to brown them. Very important, so medium heat. That will do. So now you can see they are golden brown and that's just how I want it. Perfect. Now I just switch off the heat. To my meatballs, I'm going to make creamed carrots with the parsley and potatoes. And I fo almost forgot, I'm going to do a starter as well. And it is a starter with scallops and blueberries, but more about that later. So now I'm going to make my cream sauce. The butter in the pan. I add the flour. One. Two, three. And then I pour in the milk. Continue to whisk. Now I just want the sauce to boil for a couple minutes so the flour taste disappear. I have to show you something. What you see right over there that's the old town and you see that castle that's the royal castle where the king and queen and their children live so i'm just in the middle of the capital that's quite cool isn't it this has turned more thick than it was before and that's good so we just seasoned that with salt and pepper now i'm going to boil my carrots and potatoes, same pot. I start to boil my carrots and then after a while I continue with the potatoes. But the carrots has a little bit longer cooking time than the potatoes. I have seen my friends, <laughs> they always, when they, when they boil vegetables, they have, for example, two small carrots in a big, big pot and then they add two liters of water and then ju they just boil it and that's a pity because then you have all the vitamin and the taste in all these two liters of water it's it's smarter if you concentrate to just use less water i season it with salt and pepper and i like butter so i just can use not so much Water, it's so tasty. Perfect. So now I add my potatoes. I just take the small ones, maybe just some more water. The lid on, and then we just boil it until they are soft. To my meatballs, you have to eat this. Fresh lingonberries with sugar, you just leave it for an hour. And now I'm going to pour in some cognac and of course you can buy these lingonberries already prepared in the store if you're a lazy type. I have to continue with my starters, you know, the scallops and the vinaigrette with the blueberries. But first I want to show you these beautiful flowers and all these flowers are actually edible. This yellow one is a mustard flower and it has a taste of cabbage. This white one is a horseradish salad. It's beautiful. It's very important when you fry scallops that you don't fry them for too long because they can become rubbery. So we're just going to sear them briefly, one minute at each side. And then we just season them with salt and white pepper. Then I just turn them over. And now we just place them on top of the salad.
I'm going to use all my pan droppings for a nice vinaigrette. So we just add the blueberries. And here I have some dried blueberries. Juice and zest from one lemon. In the frying pan, it's still just a little bit warm and that's exactly how, how I want it. Olive oil. And now you maybe think that blueberries and scallops is a weird combo, but it isn't. Trust me. Okay. Finely chopped shallots goes in the pan. And then we just drizzle this vinaigrette over the scallops and the salad. Now it's time to serve dinner, so just clear the decks. My meatballs are warm. And I don't want to drown my carrots and potatoes, so don't use too much sauce. Here I have some finely chopped parsley. I just mix it to the carrots. Finely chopped onion. And then I just toss it together. And then we just arrange it on this serving plate. The meatballs. Okay. And I have invited some girlfriends over for dinner who can help me eat all this. So I know they like drinks, so I have to make four decorates very quickly because I've seen they're arriving right now. So I use fresh strawberries and frozen. Juice from three limes. And four tablespoons of powdered sugar. And the most important ingredient in daiquiris is rum. So one and a half deciliter of dark rum. And then finally, the strawberry. Thank you.